Shalom, Most High in Christ, bless. Happy Sabbath to everybody tuning in. All praises to the Most High in Christ. We're back again today. Uh, I tell you one thing. Last night uh, showcased a lot of things. For you folks that's been reaching out and asking questions and everything else, just make sure, make sure you are studying the Bible to understand the scriptures instead of uh, trying to, you know, have some types of different agendas and things of that nature. You got to make sure that you really study in this because um, this is perilous times. OK, and we need to know exactly what we are doing uh, in these last days. We give all praises to the most high in Christ. Uh, a lot of you folks are, are learning now and seeing and living and understanding how to raise your spirits from a childlike spirit to grow up. All right. And come out of the Christianity, come out of the Islamic uh, faiths and stuff like that. Because even if you think about Islam, let's just talk about that for a second. If you think about Islam, is Islam is really a childlike doctrine. It's a childlike doctrine. All right. You st first of all, you're following after the pattern of uh, Catholicism. Don't even realize it. Secondly, you somehow in your mind state and if you think about it, you look at uh, Farrakhan. Farrakhan literally say that we're the Israelites. Why are you following somebody? Why are you following the Ishmaelitish faith, the Mohammedans? Why are you following that? If then do somebody turn around and say y'all are Israelites, it don't make any sense. So like all of this stuff, and then you have we showcased it last night from 1993. You had archbishops who was saying that you had the false image of Christ. They were standing up, burning signs. Stuff ain't new. They were taking uh, lighters to uh, Caesar Borgia, burning it in front of people. And the lady got on there and said, somebody should say something about that. Well, what about the uh, Ku Klux Klan burning crosses on people's yards? Who's saying stuff about that? So it just shows you the childlike spirits that's uh, on the earth. And, and for us, when I say us, I'm talking about you so-called blacks, you so-called Hispanics, whose fathers of Negroid and of Indian descent. They just dug up some stuff the other day proving it in Mexico. They just found a whole reserve of information going, oh, wait a minute. These folks knew they were Israelites. All right. They know who. I mean, it's just the Lord is doing miraculous things right now. And for us, you got to look at it. To come out of the childlike mind is to stop letting these nations dictate to us what should we do as a people. That makes no sense. You want somebody to come into your house and dictate to you when you can open up the refrigerator and you put all the food in it? You want somebody to do that? All right. These nations are dictating. And now, right now, I'm going to show you how high level it is because they're still looking for, for Kim, Kim Jong. They like we trying to do satellite. He in a, that's a small country. That's a small country, but they looking for him on satellite imagery. They trying to find out where is he? he missed. He missed one of their uh, uh, highest holidays. They're like, is he dead? Is he sick? What is it? But it goes to show you, in the midst of everything that's going on, is other things happening. There's other agendas, and people are just blinded. Because you're in a childlike spirit. Um, there's war coming to the earth. When Remember, Edom is hated. All the other nations, they follow this man, but they envy him and they hate him. When they find out, oh, he's been instigating stuff. He's done put viruses on the earth. He done put little things out there to, to try to uh, snatch people, reserves. All you got to do right now is follow the money trail. Yep. What's happening? Oil is trash right now. The oil is trash right now. The reason why, folks, we're communicating to you. The reason why is oil works like this. When, when you start to produce from an oil reserve, you have to keep producing because if you stop, the oil can just dry completely up. It can, st it can stop. So they have to continually put forth barrels. Well, people ain't taking flights. People ain't riding up and down. Uh, all kind of things has happened. They're switching over platforms. What's going to happen is you can folks, you're going to be, you're listening to this. Document it. What's happening is they're switching over platforms. Right now, the, um, we're into uh, what they call fossil fuels. 
But if you notice from the last decade, what has they been pushing? Solar, electricity, energy, <laughs> the whole time. And people going, why do they keep? Because they figured out how somebody could drive from one end of the country to the other just on a battery. <laughs> so what, what good is the oil? Right now, oil is trash. That's why y'all seeing uh, gas prices just start to get dropped in. They're now starting to pay people to take the oil. So you folks, you don't realize it not just yet, but the Lord is doing things. He's in control of all things. The Lord is the one doing it. And as it starts to boil over, remember Esau is hated. People are going to look and go, is this the man? He's been doing this. He's been puppeteering and putting people against each other the whole time. And then boom, when that happens, chaos, war breaks out. All right. And that's why we was looking at it. We was going to show y'all a video in the opener, but we're going to show you a clip of a video before we get into the class. I'm going to let y'all see the whole clip of what they're trying to do. Um, now, for you folks that tune in, if you are into madness and you start to comment, we're going to hit you quick. We're going to cut. We're gonna just gonna, we're just going to block you. I guarantee we're going to block you. If you keep going into madness, completely blocked if you ask anything on this particular program today if you bring up uh if you bring up flat earth <laughs> i'm hitting you if you bring up anything about uh you know advanced crystal technology i'm hitting you so just go ahead on and do it we got people waiting on you all right now show the video show the video this man has military equipment watch this change that's now underway will be the most significant in human history, as soldiers from the world's richest countries will soon rarely come face to face with their enemies. This is a profile of the Can't hear anything? The Hold on, y'all. Come, come back to us. Come back to us. Hang on, y'all. This is a live program, so hold on. We're going to rewind it. Let's see what's happening, if y'all can hear. Let us know if you can't hear, okay? Let's see. Hang on, y'all. I want y'all to see this video. Hang on. All right, try now. Our wars used to be fought on foot, but then we harnessed horses for battle. Swords were a weapon of choice until guns were invented, chariots slowly evolved into tanks, and in less than 100 years, this turned into this. But the change that's now underway will be the most significant in human history, as soldiers from the world's richest countries will soon rarely come face to face with their enemies. This is a profile of the Obama takeover of the world's military. For years now. Shut it down. What's this one here? I don't I don't know why you can't I don't know why they can't hear it. Figure it out. What they were saying on this video, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna show it. But the reason why I'm showing this video, just why he's trying to get it together. It's just low. They saying it's still low. Um, the reason why we're showing this video to y'all is because you have to realize something. Just we'll, we'll get to it. Let's look at mentality wise. Before, when you have a sword fight, people want to throw things. They use projectiles. You want to use uh, catapults. All kind of stuff. Let's go before all that. Where you just uh, fighting with before iron, all right? Before iron, the Philistines is the one who really brung iron work out to start fighting with. Before that, you don't you don't have you don't see iron fights as that. You seen combat, but on on a uh, primitive level. 
So e so look at how it is on this side of the world. Move all the way up to the 10th century. The 10th century introduces to us the gun. Once the gun is invented, things take off. The so-called white man start using it heavily um, because he stole the I, the the understanding of gunpowder from the so-called uh, Chinese man. And he utilized that and he took over what they called the new world. This is coming from the 10th century. This is uh, 10 centuries after Christ left. All right. Now, what they're showing us is on this video is you get developments starting to happen because people are forcing things behind that gun, behind weapons. All right. Whoever has the biggest. Trust me right now, if we had a weapon. Uh, that was what able was able to dis disintegrate a person on thought. Right now, we would rule everything. We would every everybody would be stuck because they say, "Well, he could just disintegrate." They, matter of fact, they showed a, a show like that. I don't know if you guys ever watched the uh, Twilight Zone. Mm -hmm. They had a little evil kid. Mm -hmm. They called him the monster. Yep. And what he would do is he could think you into just whatever. He could turn you into a jack in a box. He could do anything he wanted to do. He, he, his name was Anthony. Yeah, it was Anthony Freeman. It was, you may know him as a other character by the name of uh, Franklin Richards, Reed Richards' son. They might have been in the comic books, but they showed this character because everybody was scared. It was hot as I don't know what outside. They walked up to him. They, he said, he, "He said, how how are you doing today?" He said, "Well, it was a, he was sweating and everything. It's a, it's a great day. It's a great day." They were scared of him. What they was doing, think about it spiritually. Whoever has the most power on a weapon type level, they're going to rule. Now, the Lord's coming. You ain't going to get no higher power than that. So, you know, the Israelites are going to rule. But so they're developing things to try to keep themselves safe. And we're going to show you. Ho hopefully it plays loud. Come on. Our wars used to be fought on foot, but then we harnessed horses for battle. Swords were a weapon of choice until guns were invented, chariots slowly evolved into tanks, and in less than 100 years this turned into this. But the change that's now underway will be the most significant in human history, as soldiers from the world's richest countries will soon rarely come face to face with their enemies. This is a profile of the robotic takeover of the world's militaries. For years now, the military of the United States and our closest allies have been using a whole range of robotic systems, like remotely controlled robots now commonly used for surveillance and for destroying bombs, close-in weapons systems on board virtually every ship in the West's Navy can destroy incoming missiles, aircraft, and smaller, faster boats, all without human assistance. Unmanned ground vehicles guard areas and attack enemies using lethal and non-lethal weapons. The MQ Reaper unmanned aerial vehicle is a long-range killer that's so effective, America's 174th fighter wing has become the first squadron in history to convert from flying fighter jets to an all-remotely piloted UAV attack group. The secretive stealth unmanned RQ-170 drove over Iran in 2011. Tiny surveillance drones the size of small birds or insects. A robotic, remote-controlled sentry gun that's replacing human guards on the South Korean side of the demilitarized zone, and for Israel, along the Gaza border fence. And the Protector, an unmanned speedboat used by the Singapore Navy to patrol the busiest port in the world, the Israeli Navy to enforce its blockade of the Gaza Strip, and the Mexican Navy to confront highly creative drug smugglers. Some have called for a halt in the development of military robotics technology. But the US, its allies, and key adversaries continue to make their militaries as technologically advanced as possible because of the massive tactical advantage it gives them. The Pentagon currently deploys some 11,000 UAVs and 12,000 ground robots across the world, making America the clear leader in several prototype systems that may be just as sophisticated as some in the American arsenal. The Russians have begun deploying armed robots to increase security at its ballistic missile bases and may deploy unmanned airships to monitor its interests in the Arctic. Worldwide, military spending on the robotics industry is projected to hit $7.5 billion by 2018. But it's not just governments doing the investing. Google has begun buying up robotics companies, positioning itself to dominate the commercial market, estimated to be worth around $37 billion by 2018. 
Google or another tech company like it could become the next generation's dominant defense contractor. Some of the projects that we know are in development for military use and should hit the battlefield in the coming years include the Knifefish, an underwater mine-sweeping robot that will replace the Navy's trained dolphins and sea lions in 2017, an unmanned autonomous helicopter carrying a remotely operated sniper rifle. Unmanned ground vehicles of the future will increasingly perform automated surveillance, reconnaissance, assault, and breaching missions. Other UGVs will simply retrofit existing Humvees and tanks with sensors and cameras to make them autonomous. Boston Dynamics humanoid robots will be used for search and rescue, and their big dog robotic pack mule will accompany soldiers into terrain that's too difficult for conventional vehicles. Unmanned missile barges will provide extra weapons for existing destroyers. Cruise missiles that are smart and networked to autonomously coordinate and swarm their attack so as to ensure maximum damage to their target. A joint aerial layer network will link all air assets and all other military assets in a region to provide maximum coordination and efficiency. High speed unmanned fighters and bombers will fly alongside manned aircraft until they take over the Air Force completely. They'll be piloted by soldiers located safely back on a ship or on some faraway base and undetectable underwater pods will be placed in the ocean weeks, months, or even years ahead of time, and eventually given a command to release unmanned submarines or unmanned aerial vehicles that will float to the surface and then take to the air. The reason that militaries will turn to robots to fight its battles is obvious. It'll keep their soldiers from getting killed. But, like many problems posed by our increasingly technological world, removing the human connection to what war viscerally feels like on the ground, where it's being fought, will create a whole new set of challenges. Many of the American pilots now flying drone missions in Iraq and Afghanistan already do so from places like Arizona, far away from the battlefield, which means they can bomb a group of people and then half an hour later be sitting safely at home with their families. It's no surprise that this extreme daily contrast is causing these soldiers to experience high rates of PTSD. Then there's the idea that by further removing the human cost of war from the equation, we risk becoming more tolerant of our governments engaging in armed conflicts. And then there's the unknown. What happens when two nuclear-armed states engage in a direct robots-on-robots -robots battle? How does one... Shut them down. There's so much in this video that's not even funny. Um, you folks got to realize everything that's going on, and you keep your eyes open, your spiritual antennas up, everything is linked. Everything. You got the Elon Musk putting up the Skynet, Space Link, all right? You got Google developing the software and the tools. You got Ubisoft making sure the video game system can train the next line of killers in understanding how to detach from killing. Kill, 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 kill. You know, y'all folks play it. And some of y'all uh, right now be sitting in with Batman draws on playing Call of Duty. All right. Like it's just oh, in your mind, you think it's a game. You doing all these things. Everybody did it. Halo. You know, they started training you. Even Golden. Remember Goldeneye. Just walk up, make somebody bloody and then detach. So they're they're utilizing all type of things. It's, it's forced is pulling on you. The point is. There's a war coming. These folks know this. They're not doing this. Everybody, why do you think if it was so high class uh, uh, classification, how come everybody building robots? Everybody building robots. Everybody trying to get into nuclear power. You folks that are uh, lost in the sauce, as they say, you don't realize it, but they do. All of these things that they're doing is to fight against Christ. Every single thing that they're doing is to fight against the Lord and his angels. OK, because they have the money and the resource to and the time to sit down and dig up artifacts and, and manuscripts and compare it and understand all of the stuff that y'all think out there. You folks, so, so-called conscious people that dismiss the Bible. This man unvetted the Bible 10 times over. He already knows he can't stop. You cannot stop this. It's a it's a system that they're putting in place to try to fight Christ, all right?
Let's go to the book of Isaiah. Chapter 34, verse 1. Let's open up there. So today's topic, of course, mm -hmm. uh, the war is coming. It's really the holy army, <laughs> the holy army of God, all right, against the army of darkness. Mm. And this is a two. Let, let's say this is twofold because we know that we're fighting a spiritual war right now. And the spiritual war, it has to be won first. I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it clearly. The spiritual war has to be won first. Anyone knows that. See, America has captured the spirit of people. It got y'all souls. People want to live the American dream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. I'm gonna give you. An, I'm gonna. I'm gonna hit you with this. Mm -hmm. If you take. Uh, two two men and line them up, and you dress one man one man in a uh, in a holy garment, and you put another guy standing next to him and put him in a tuxedo. What is the imagery that people are gonna think? Put in the comment boards. You got somebody standing there with a with a with a just a you know a garment with a girdle on, <laughs> and then and then you got the guy. Standing there in a tuxedo, a full-on tux. Mm. All right, it's the this is the mentality of this place, and it's killing our people. All right, we've been showing it over and over again. Uh, three years ago, we warned y'all about uh, Skylink. We said we talked about five G. Three years ago, we was talking about five G, and what they were bringing out. You don't realize. You don't realize the uh, the frequency. So, let me see. We got some. We might have some some people on here who might be smart in, uh, you know, maybe they'll understanding radio waves and frequencies and stuff like that. Everything is governed. Those frequencies is governed by the sun. You you have to understand that it's governed by the sun. The sun puts out uh, material that the frequencies can ride upon and go across the globe. Um, we was explaining this to a lot of people because those frequencies are off the chart. If you go in any community and you put the uh, and you put a, a meter up, it's off the charts. So you have all of this stuff being built up in an archaic system. It's this, this place is a cage, so to speak. Because you go to uh, places like Singapore, we showed y'all. They're built up, their city looking futuristic. All these other places are building futuristic cities to be able to handle this. But America is staying in the Stone Age. You got roads that were still from, you know, before when they started building roads. Primitive. You got, you still got overhead street lights. You don't need that. You don't need, you don't even need these type of things. Like, it's already known that, that uh, power is transferable. Uh, without wires it's already known this stuff right now but we are stuck here with the with the same big corporations big media and everything that's the ones that's funding wars getting people killed we saw you saw the video people can sit down bomb people and go have lunch go have dinner and guess what if you're voting for this if you're voting or anything you're a part of all that you're a part of all the madness which is babylon the great but uh, good news for us, not for everyone, the Lord is going to destroy this, this, this whole system. All right? Let's read it. Isaiah chapter 34. Mm -hmm. Let me start at verse 1. Okay. Shalom, most high Christ bless. Happy Sabbath. The book of Isaiah chapter 34 and verse 1. Come near, ye nations, mm -hmm. to hear mm -hmm. and hearken, ye people. Let the earth hear and all that is therein, the world, and all things that come forth of it. You see, nothing's going to be able to escape. Nothing's going to be able to escape. This place is going to go underneath supreme rulership. But it has to be shown. All this high-power weaponry that he's, that he's doing is going to be nothing. We're going to show you. Come on. Verse 2. For the indignation 
of the Lord is upon all nations. You know what's funny about this? Because people want all nations to be included. <laughs> but yet he said the indignation. Indignation means uh, righteous anger. All right. Come on. And his fury upon all their armies. And his fury upon all their armies. So you wonder why they're trying to build T2s, Terminators and stuff? These folks know what's coming. It's in their spirit. Come on. He have utterly destroyed them. He have delivered them to the slaughter. So this is speaking as though it happened already. Because <laughs> there ain't no question about it. It's already done. The Lord going to destroy this. Come on. Verse 3. Their slain also should be cast out, mm -hmm. and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses. So that, do you know what that means? Ain't nobody going to be talking about let's go around burying folks. There's going to be a, this, it's a lot of dead bodies. Come on. And the mountains shall be melted with their blood. Meaning their governments shall be melted with their blood. Now, uh, Lord's will, we get to start doing these similitude classes because let me tell you something. These apologetics and folks who go to theology school, they don't know the Bible. That's number one. Number two, they're stuck in a doctrine. So they're trying to retrofit their ideologies to the words of God. There's similitudes in the Bible. Like when you read about mountains or you read about seas or water or the trees or gardens. We went over these things. Lord's will, we will put together a similitude list to show you folks, hey, sometimes when the Bible is saying mountains, it's referring to the governments, the rulerships. So it's saying that their rulership is going to be what? It says, okay, uh, for their slain also should be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses, uh -huh. and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. And let me say this to you folks that are tuning in, because you might have been watching the classes and you see certain things, and it seems like we are um, apocalypse hunt hunters. <laughs> Or it seemed like every message that we're showing you is, is a dire message, which it is. But make no mistake about it, these are happy times. This is happy times. Because if you're comfortable in being oppressed, then something's wrong with you. You have something wrong. You know, if you, if you like being oppressed, if you like not having your own and not seeing your nation be able to contribute to the to this uh thing or society or to the world to advancements or whatever you want to call it if you like not seeing that then that's a problem all right we want to see our little children we want to see our nation contribute to to a uh, society on the highest level how can we come we can't do that because we're being oppressed now when the lord returns you're gonna see way more advancements than this man ever had Lord's will, we get to that topic. We show you some some uh, things, advancements that the Lord has that blow your mind away. Mm -hmm. We're talking about technology where the you looking at a TV on the wall, we're talking about a whole hol a hologram come up. That's in the Bible. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. All right. You're talking about being able to go from point A to point B in underneath milliseconds. That's in the Bible. Teleportation, Teleportation all that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's in the Bible. But the point is, that's in our kingdom. How are you going to give uh, this kingdom something like that, which is so wicked, they would be using it for wickedness. You have people teleporting into uh, ladies' bedrooms and, and then teleporting <laughs> right back out. You know, guys keeping score out and teleporting into nine broads' bedrooms and stuff, keeping tr scores and stuff like that. People teleporting and everything, you know, doing all kind of stuff. Anyway, the point is, our kingdom it's going to be way more righteous. Therefore, the technology is going to be even higher. Okay? That's Lord's will for another topic. Read on. Verse 4. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, oh. and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. Oh, 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 oh. That's what that is. Yeah. <laughs> so... What that's really talking about, brothers and sisters, because he's using the similitude and what the prophet is seeing, the mushroom cloud. So when you see a nuclear explosion, you see the mushroom cloud. He says, and the heavens should be rolled together mm. 
as a scroll. So he's the, he's describing how it would look in his terminology. So when the prophet's seeing this, he's seeing this in the spirit. He's seeing the mushroom cloud with the nuclear expo- explosion. Mm. Okay. Can you imagine how terrifying that would be? You know, right now, you, you look at it on TV mm. and people see it and it's like a little bit terrifying. But imagine not knowing what that is because you can compute. Mm-hmm. Our knowledge of technology is caught up to where we can compute to what they what they're seeing we can understand it mm. but imagine the lord show you something from from 10,000 years from now you'll mm. be lost <laughs> all right they you know what you know they uh mocked that on um what was the movie with uh Sylvester Stallone when they had the three she- seashells and it came in she was like trying to figure out yeah demolition man yeah. It, it, he was like oh how do you use these shells oh yeah you yeah, know yeah, yeah, yeah. they show you like if, if if it gets technology advances farther enough out of your reach you wouldn't even know how to compute things all right read on it says and all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll oh yeah and you're right the lord's technology is a hundred times more powerful than whatever they can even could fathom right now there's the lord has his technology in the midst of us right now we can't even see it how about that there's things in the midst of us right now, mm-hmm. and we can't even see it. It's fully detached from what your reality is. How about that? All right. So you, for us, we're looking at it like, wait a minute, what's going on? You got to catch up to technology. But who's utilizing this technology? That's the that's the catch. Mm-hmm. All right. That's the catch. We're going to get there. But before you can even understand that, we have to. Our minds have to be converted over, all right, to understanding Christ and the keeping of the commandments. Because you give uh, a simple Jake these type of powers and technology, he'll destroy himself and others. Guaranteed. His anger will get the best of him. His childlike mind is wonder all. You in uh, ladies uh, DMing women and everything, naked pictures and all kind of stuff. I can't tell you how many times on my phone somebody just slip up. Boom. What is this? Oh, what? Forget it. <laughs> and it's a lot of times it's the ladies too. The ladies, you're not the ladies ain't going to escape. You ladies have a serious problem with that emotions and and trying to be on some type of other level. Come out of the madness. Mm-hmm. Read on. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 34 and verse 4. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved. Come on. And the heaven shall be rolled together as a scroll. Mm. And all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth off from the vine. Yikes. And, and as a falling fig from the fig tree. See, we're spiritual people. Mm. We're spiritual people. So a lot of times, you know, we'll do the topics and stuff. And the Lord would just put that into your spirit to really understand oh no nah, a, a lot of people battling certain things but this should stabilize you to the point where you realize oh i can't play with sin uh gotta get myself together because something is coming the lord's indignation is coming to the earth do you want to be a part of the indignation on the side where you're catching the fury or do you want to get covered with the protection like we read last night mm-hmm. read on Verse 5, for my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, <laughs> it shall come down upon Idumia. Right. So uh, uh, Achmed Athias put up, uh, it reminds him of how Elisha. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep, when, Second when, King when, 6, when, when he when couldn't he saw, see. When he couldn't see and he saw the chair. Oh, the, yep. Mm-hmm. So you got to think about that, though. That's perfect. Um, But you have to think about if that's the case, Mm -hmm. then what is around us all the time? That's why we when we pray, we pray for the Lord to have his righteous and angels and his heads of protection around us. But let me say this. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all folks got to get on the Uber before we uh, open up class because we send up prayers. All right. We do send up prayers to the for the most high to uh, put his righteous angels, his hedge of protection around us Mm -hmm. and to destroy our enemies. (laughs) Mm-hmm. OK, which makes you really start to understand how could somebody be praying to white man Jesus and then saying, save me from my enemies. 
<laughs> How's that going to work? <laughs> yeah, you're being a hypocrite now. <laughs> Read on. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 5. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea mm. and upon the people of my curse to judgment. To judgment. To judgment. Come on. Verse 6. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats, mm. with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For the Lord hath a sacrifice in Basra mm. and a great slaughter in the land of Idumia. And a great slaughter in the land of Idumia. Idumia right now is, is really talking about Edom. Mm -hmm. It's a Greek word for Edom. Idumia is a Greek word for Edom. Put that put that down in your notes. And Basra is the is a place where they were supposed to be their capital. But the Lord destroyed that place, left it desolate. Mm -hmm. So why is he left it desolate? Why is he mention, making mention again that it's gonna be a great slaughter in the land of Idumia? Meaning wherever the uh wherever they're at, the Lord gonna destroy it. Mm -hmm. All right? So it's a war coming. Now let's get to the topic. Uh Matthew chapter twenty two. Matthew chapter 22, and start at 41. Say Matthew, chapter 22 and verse 41. Uh -huh. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked him, saying, What think ye of Christ? Whose son is he? So he asking them, whose son is the Christ? So now this should lend some things to us. We should, we should open our minds up. Number one, understand that Israel already was looking for the Messiah. They in captivity here. So they're already looking for the Savior that's pro prophesied to come in our holy scriptures, in our records. Now he's finally there, and he's activated on a high level. Mm -hmm. He's asking them this question. Read on. They say unto him, the son of David. They said, so they said he's going to be the son of, he's got to be the son of David. I mean, he got to be from the lineage of David. Mm -hmm. Come on. Verse 43. He said unto them, how then doth David in spirit call him Lord? <laughs> how then? Does David in spirit call him Lord? Wee. <laughs> so that's the question. Come on. Saying, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. Let's go there. Where is he saying that? Put in the comment boards. Let's see, let's see, who's, uh, let's see who's paying attention. Put it in the comment boards. Said the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. So obviously Christ has enemies, plural. Somebody might be like, oh, that's just the devil. But if it was just the devil, how come it's plural? Hmm. Let me see. Somebody put it in the comment boards. All right. Psalms 110 and verse 1. Okay. The book of Psalms, chapter 110 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. Till I make thine enemies your footstool. So you got to put his enemies underneath his feet. Read the next verse. Verse 2. The Lord shall send the, the rod of thy strength out <laughs> of Zion. So the Lord's going to send the rod of the, Christ is the rod mm -hmm. out of Zion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. Come on. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Rule 
foul in the midst of thy enemies. Okay, so that obviously shows us some things, big time. Number one, when you go back up into Revelation, we know Christ got to reign for a thousand years. We know in that thousand years, he's going to put his enemies underneath his foot. They're going to be under subjection. Mm. All right. The Lord is preparing the way. We know Satan after the thousand years is going to be let loose. Mm. Okay. We know these things from the Bible. But do you know now he has to rule in the midst of the enemies? That means when the Lord returns back, some people are not going to want to, they're going to, they're going to have to be forced by that rod or broken to pieces, like the Bible states. Mm. Mm -hmm. So obviously something's going to transpire here. That means something has to happen. That means that someone will be in the midst of warring with Christ. Thank you. Paying attention. Let's go back. Let's go back. I want us to try to stay on topic. Mm -hmm. St. Matthew, mm -hmm. chapter 22 and verse 43. He said unto them, how, doth, how then doth David in spirit call him Lord? Uh-oh, come on. Saying the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand till I make thy enemies thy footstool. Mm -hmm. If David then call him Lord... How is he his son? If David calls him Lord, how then is he son? That's the question. That's the question. Somebody put it in the comments. Somebody put it in the comments. If David call him Lord, how is he his son? What is being shown to us? We know he's the son of David. You read it throughout. The, the demons even call him the son of David. <laughs> I mean, everybody know he's the son of David. Mm -hmm. He come from the lineage and the line of David. Why is he saying, why is Christ asking him this, this question? Read the next verse. Let's see this, the scholars that, that's out in that time. Let's <laughs> see if they know something. Verse 46. And no man was able to answer him a word. <sighs> Neither durst any man from that day forth ask him any more, more questions. questions. Anybody, everybody who was there was like, we can't fool with him. He too tough. So the question, so now for us, if this question is posed to you, now you have to think, how are we going to, what, what's going on here? What's being, what's being asked of us? Let's say Christ was here from the beginning. Okay. He says, if, if, David then call him Lord. How is he his son? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna wait on y'all. We, we gonna see what, we gonna see what y'all put in the comment boards. All right. <laughs> Go to Matthew twenty one. Jim backwards. Matter of fact, go to Matthew 1 and verse 1. Matthew 1 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying nothing. Hope the class should reveal it. Okay. The book of St. Matthew, chapter 1 and verse 1. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, uh -huh. the son of David. So the book opened up. The gospel opened up. The son of David, the son of Abraham. Mm -hmm. So it's, but, but is it? Shouldn't you find something strange? What is strange about how it opened up? Read it again. <laughs> St. Matthew, chapter 1, verse 1. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, uh -huh. the son of David, the son of Abraham. I'm hitting y'all today. What's up with the, uh, what's, what's strange about this? What's strange about this? First creation. I see y'all being... In the beginning was the word, but then it just called, it just called, Dave, it, it, it opened up and said, the son of David. Mm -hmm. Whew, something being shown to us. Hmm. This is where you wish everybody was, you know, together and then we could just point and say, <laughs> you ask, what is this? What is this? Mm -hmm. God's will. 
Uh, put David first. Dep, that's Hosea hit it. He said they put David first. Shouldn't they, shouldn't have been like the son of Abraham? Dennis didn't go to David. It put David first right off the gate. It started out with him, huh? Had to go, he had to go through the king's lineage. And then it's ordained. All right. All right. Chosen generation. He's in the flesh. He's, he's in the flesh by seed generation. Okay. I don't know what that I don't know what that means. WGW, whatever. What? Yeah. Let's go to First Samuel. Start off. Let's let's start off there. First Samuel, one of the most powerfulest prophets. The excellent book. Seventeen. Oh, okay. okay. Samuel. Let's no. Oh. Well, I, I be always fighting to try to start this in the beginning, but <laughs> let's start at verse. Let's start at verse nineteen. First yep. <laughs> Samuel, chapter seventeen, and verse nineteen. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. Hold up. Get, pull up Google. <laughs> pull that valley up. Pull, give me a map. Give me a map. Let's get some visual. Uh, let's get some uh, satellite <laughs> imagery on the location. Read it again for him. First Samuel, chapter 17, and verse 19. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel... Mm -hmm. We're in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. So Saul, um, being the king at the time, the king of Israel, all right, chosen, okay, they're fighting with the Philistines. Now, remember, we had made mention earlier on the Philistines, they were, they were tough when it came to war. I mean, you folks know that the Lord could have had us walk right through their land but he's like, if they see the Philistine, they're going to they gonna repent. <laughs> they ain't ready for them. We weren't ready for them. But now, obviously, at this time, the Lord like, no, nah, they ready. The Israelites are ready. So we're doing we're, this topic right here is really a long topic. It really probably could be about six hours because what we're supposed to do is go to, like, Numbers 10, go back into Exodus, start showing you how the Lord was setting and preparing Israel for war, how he set the camps up. How he called for uh, them to make a uh, silver uh, trumpet. Mm -hmm. All right. A silver trumpet to assemble the armies. Mm -hmm. And uh, all that stuff is assemblitude. Okay. Because the trumpet is going to be is going to be blown again. And the Lord's holy army is going to be assembled again. Which you know of it as the 144,000. Okay. Mark for glory. That's the that 144,000, 12,000 out of each tribe. It's marked for glory. They're 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 handpicked by the Lord. And if you have somebody that tell you that the hundred and forty four thousand is coming out of one area or one time zone there, they failed mm -hmm. because the, you you mean to tell me uh, the mighty men, the three mighty is not going to be in one hundred forty four thousand. Samson, Samson, David himself. Right. No, you got to. That's some, you, this some competition. So let's get this straight. You're telling me brothers today. Say that one camp gonna capass all these, but they only go to the streets and cry out and spare out, but they ain't actually doing any actual war. They ain't never swung a never sword swung to a the sword. head. <laughs> no, never. Yeah. But but <laughs> magically. So don't listen to anybody saying that, that that that's madness. The you are you brothers, you brothers out there, man, that are studying these scriptures day and night, trying to make sure that you line up with the will of the most high through Christ. This is a, this slot is up. The slots is there. Mm. You are fighting for one of those, that slot right there. You are fighting to be in that. That's a that's a uh, mm. it's a high honor, mm. and to be in that position right there, 
there's not going to be anything like you, <laughs> and there never was anything like you, and ain't going to be nothing like you afterwards, who, what the Lord is doing for, for that particular army. It's just like the Green Lantern Corps, all right? Mm. So you understand that. Let me see what you got. You got the map? You, you pull down to... Zoom up. Give me a give me some relation. Go back all the way out to where I'm at. Okay, we know it's the land of Israel. Scroll down. Scroll down into it. All right. There's the Dead Sea, right there. We know right up above is Jericho. Scroll down into it. I can't even see it. All right, so they they this a war it's a war it's war happening there ain't no war right now but there's war happening in the Bible in this region in this area go to regular map uh instead of the instead of the um not nah, just the um instead of the the terrain imagery yeah let me see that there we go all right so y'all get a little where Jerusalem at so go down into Jerusalem. See it? Zoom in, zoom in. Might have to go to the regular, the back to the regular one to find it. Oh, that's so perfect. You don't realize what um what we're looking at now, but I'll give up, leave it up there for a second so y'all can take a screenshot of this little area um it's gonna come in handy in another topic that area right there where that little orange is at so you can zoom into it uh, where is that the where the right there mm -hmm. all right perfect this that's that's it that's all i wanted i this is done for a reason folks because in another topic this prove something so beautiful that's not even funny the area and the region where this is located at with I'm not, it's just for another topic but just know this much you have some uh telemetry of where things is at there's a fight going on right here let's let's read for samuel chapter 17 verse 19 and saul and they and and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. Philistines. Fighting with the Philistines. So if you were to, we was to pull up a, a super ancient map. I got a book where I have all the little maps and stuff. And you pull it up. The Philistines garrisoned that area right there. Why is the Philistines even on our land? Okay, when you know the prophecy, when they should know that the Lord God of Israel was commanding us to wipe people out, that show you the level of pride that they had on them to stay on the land. So now it's a fight. All right, come on. Verse 20. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with a keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. Jesse is his father. Come on. And he came to the trench as the host was going forth to the fight and shouted for the battle. <laughs> come on. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, mm. army against army. Army against army. The Israelites against the Philistines. Now, I'm going to ask you the question. Is this the uh, Holy Army yet? Is this the Holy Army? It would never stand. This would never happen with the Holy Army. All right. Come on. Verse 22. And David left his carriage. And the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army mm. and came and saluted his brethren. Verse 23. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of God. He was the champion. The Philistine of God. Read. Goliath. Goliath. That's the famous story, y'all. That's the famous story that everybody read in church and they got all pictures. They got a skinny little David up. We'll find out if David was weak. 
Don't worry. Exactly. Oh, <laughs> uh, they got a skinny little picture of David with a little sling and a rock in his hand. All right. You keep thinking David was small if you want to. They always use it in sports too, <laughs> especially like a team or whatever that's yeah. that's not really too good, but they go against a powerhouse. They call it David versus David Goliath. David versus Goliath. All right, come on. <laughs> Verse twenty three. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Goth, uh -huh. Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines. What's funny is I think they just had recently discovered some stuff with Goliath's name on it <laughs> up uh, over in the, over there against the valley. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all folks can look that up. Come on. Spake according to the same words, and David heard them. Mm -hmm. And all the men of Israel were where when they saw the man fled from him and were so afraid. So they was they was uh, afraid of this champion Goliath. Now there's another movie that once again <laughs> they try to embody the spirit of David. It called Troy. Oh yeah, remember that yep, they had an opening yep. scene where he uh where he came where he um. Where he was fighting the uh, the champion, this big huge dude. Mm -hmm. uh, I forgot his name was Boagrius. <laughs> he had a he had a mighty name and everything. He might can, you might can find it. He had a mighty name and everything. Boagrius, he moved people out the way. Oh, was mad and everything. And they catch uh, the other guy uh, Achilles. He laying there asleep with two women. They go and gra grab him and, to fight. All right, but this you you got the clip. I'm gonna show, I gotta show it to him. I gotta show it to him because they take everything from from us and they glorify certain th aspects of it. Mm -hmm. They take they take the storyline. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Bring us! <laughs> Boagrius has this effect on many heroes. Careful who you insult, old king. The king! Achilles is not with the army. Where is he? I sent a boy to look for him. You should have a war tomorrow when you're better rested. I should have you whipped for your impudence. Perhaps you should fight him. Achilles. Achilles. Look at the men's faces. You can save hundreds of them. You can end this war with a swing of your sword. Think how many songs they'll sing in your honor. Let them go home to their wives. Imagine a king who fights his own battles. Wouldn't that be a sight? Of all the warlords loved by the gods, I hate him the most. We need him, my king. For now. <laughs> so, see, 
the, that's why you uh you women who you uh you know you got your little boys and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. A lot of you women and you try to stop him. He be playing with sticks and store, swords and stuff like that. Just let him go. Just yep. let him go. Mm-hmm. All right. You don't know what kind of mighty spirit he have in him. But this goes to show you. Now he stepped up. If you was paying attention, they put two weaver beams in his hand. Mm-hmm. You don't read that in the scripts too. All right. So, but they always take the glory side of the war and portray those things on camera. And you don't realize that they're talking exactly about the Israelites. Like that story right there, that's about the Israelites. Yep. All right. You have no and you have no clue about it. All right. It's for another topic. But let's go back and read. The book of First Samuel, chapter 17, verse 24. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man fled from him and were so afraid. Mm-hmm. And the men of Israel said, Have ye seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up, and it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches, mm. and will give him his daughter, and make his father's house free in Israel. And make his father's house free in Israel. Can you imagine that? Mm. Come on. Verse 26. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, what shall be done to this man that killeth this Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine uh. that he should defy the armies of the living God? You hear what he called it? That he would defy the armies of the living God. Obviously now David knows something that the other men does not know. He's like, that. who is this that's going to defy the armies of the living God? Mm. Okay, read. Verse 27. And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. Mm-hmm. And Elab, excuse me, and Elab, his eldest heard when he spake unto the men. And Elab's anger was kindled against David. He mad at David. Come on. And he said, Why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? <laughs> I know thy pride uh-huh. and thy naughtiness uh, of thine heart. Uh-huh. For thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. So David already in his spirit <laughs> was a mighty little warrior. Already. He like, I know your pride. You come to see the battle. <laughs> All right, come on. Verse 29. And David said, what have, what have I now done? <laughs> Is there not a cause? And he turned from him toward another and spake after the same manner. And the people answered him again after the former manner. So he pleading his case with everybody. You know, what's going What? What have I done? He know what he want to do. All right? Because he got a different spirit on him. Come on. Verse 31. And when the words were heard which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent for him. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Mm -hmm. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Look at the spirit that's on David. That's why David is is a man after the Lord's own heart. All right. And even David fell. David fell Mm -hmm. a couple times. All right. But look at his spirit that's on him. Okay. Come on. Verse 33. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he is a man of war (laughs) from his youth. He was a man of war from his youth. You just a youth. Come on. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, Uh and there came a lion Uh and a bear Uh and took a lamb out of the flock. A lion and a bear came and took a lamb. uh, a lamb out of the flock. That's this is kind of it's unimaginable. Like you see a you see that you like he gone. <laughs> Come on, verse thirty five. And I went out after him mm. and smote him mm. and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. But so obviously he ain't no little guy. <laughs> obviously he's not a little guy. He was able to catch him by his beard and smote him. Come on. Verse 36. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. Uh. And this uncircumcised Philistine 
shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defiled the armies of the living God. He keeps saying that. Mm. Come on. Verse 37. David said, moreover, the Lord that, li that delivered me out of the paw of the lion. So he understood one thing. It wasn't by him. The Lord delivered him out of the paw of the lion. Come on. And out of the paw of the bear. Come on. He will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. What does this show us about David? What does this show us, the one thing about David? Put it in the comment boards. What does this show us about David? Hmm. What did he have? <laughs> hmm. What did he have? Hmm. Yep. All right. <laughs> Faith and trust. Correct. Mm -hmm. His faith was on a high level because he, he understand the Lord is going to be able to fight with him. All right. Come on. And Saul said unto David, go and the Lord be with thee. <laughs> <laughs> so you really. So everybody's telling the story that he's not ready. He's a youth. He's young. He's ruddy. <laughs> All right. He's youthful. <laughs> now what's going to happen? Let's see. Come on. Verse 38. And Saul, and Saul armed David with his armor, and he put an helmet of brass upon his head. Also he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor. And he assayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. Oh, stop. So, first of all, David displays that he understands that the, the armies of the living God should not be defiled. Write that down. Then he makes a comment to Saul about the Lord will, they'll be as one, he, he, the Lord will deliver him in his hands. So that get, show us fate. And now he's like, I can't fight with your armor. I have to prove them. So I got to prove the armor. Write that down. Write that down. All right. Read on. For I have not proved them, and David put them off him. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones. And he chose five smooth stones. Come on. Out of the brook. Uh-huh. And put them in a shepherd's bag. And put them, so he took five <laughs> stones out of the brook, and he put them in a shepherd's bag. Please pay attention. Come on. Which he had, even in a script, and his sling was in his hand. Mm. And he drew near to the Philistine. Uh -huh. And the Philistine came and drew near unto David. And the man that had bared the shield went before him. Mm. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him. He disdained him. Like, I'm used to fighting, I'm used to fighting real mighty people. <laughs> He don't even look like he been in one battle. Come on. For he was but a youth uh -huh. and ruddy come on. and of a fair countenance. Uh -huh. come on. And the Philistines said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And, I, and, and the Philistine cursed David by his gods. He cursed David by their own false gods. Mm. Come on. And the Philistines said to David, Come to me. And I would give thy flesh into the fowls of the air mm. and to the beasts of the field. Mm. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts. In the name of the Lord of hosts. David knows something. Come on. The God of the, the armies army of, of Israel. The God of the armies of Israel. The God of the armies of Israel. Understand what he's, <laughs> he knows something. Come on. Whom thou hast defiled. Mm. This day will the Lord deliver thee. This day will the Lord deliver thee. Come on. Into mine hand. 
and I will smite thee <laughs> and take thine head from thee, mm. and I will give the carcasses of the hosts of the Philistines this day and to the fowls of the air. So they put, we just showed you, <laughs> Troy, how they showed Achilles. David, like, I'm going to give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines. I'm going to take the Philistines if I have to by myself and kill everybody one by one. <laughs> but you don't realize with spirit on him, he, he, in, in all fairness, he could have done it. Mm. It's a different spirit on him. He could have done it. Remember the mighties, all right? Mm. They were able to, to, this man was able to throw his spear through a, 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 a bunch of folks, all right? Come on. And to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know. That all the earth may know. We just read about this. <laughs> that all the earth may know. Come on. That there is a God in Israel. That is the ultimate powers with the Israelites, all right? That's the type of spirit that you should have on you when you're dealing with the Lord. We don't have a spirit of fear. All right. Come on. Verse 47. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear. The Lord do what? For the Lord saveth not with sword and spear. It's easy. That's, that's, that's not what the Lord is. He don't, he don't need that. Come on. For the battle. Is the Lord for the what? For the battle is the Lord. The battle is the Lord's, and you know you're gonna lose. Come on, and He will give you into our hands, and He'll give you into our hands. So this is the level of this in Christianity. They always take David and morph it into whatever battles you have. All right, and there's nothing wrong with understanding it in that mentality, but then you gotta have the faith with it. You can't just be like, you know, yeah, give me, you know, the Lord get me into the hand like like he did with David, you know, and Goliath. <laughs> no, you have to have the faith with it. You see, all the attributes of what David is doing is showing us something, all right, to have the faith, to have the trust, to prove your armor, which is this book. Prove yourselves. Prove your ministry, all right? Come on. Verse 48, and it came to pass. When the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. He didn't, he didn't walk. He had that full courage on him. He ran towards him. Come on. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and sling it and smote the Philistine in his forehead. So <laughs> this, he took a stone. He took a stone. <laughs> Let's go to Matthew 21. <laughs> Matthew 21, verse 42. You can start at 41. Okay. St. Matthew, chapter 21 and verse 41. They say unto him, he will miserably destroy those wicked men mm -hmm. and will let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits in their seasons. Mm -hmm. Jesus said unto them, Did ye never read in the scriptures the stone? The what? The stone. So Christ referred to himself as a stone. The scriptures referred to Christ as a stone. Come on. With the builders, rejected. But the builders was the Pharisees, the scribes, the Sadducees, the people, the leaders, mm -hmm. the elders of Israel. They rejected Christ. They rejected that chief cornerstone. All right, come on. The same is become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. This is the Lord's doing. Come on. And it is marvelous. It is what? It is marvelous in our eyes. It's, it sure is. It's marvelous to see everything, how it all uh, comes together. You just think he was told, like he just in his own mind was told that, to, you know, I'm gonna just get a uh, stone and do it. No, the Lord had the spirit upon him. Say, so take a stone and 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 throw it at him. Now you think that he just threw the stone with a regular man's strength, then you have a problem. <laughs> uh huh. See, I think what we see what 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 the sad part about Christianity, y'all, is what they do. They take the stories of the Bible, 
and they make it like a fairy tale. Mm. And they don't have a clear understanding. That's why precept must be upon precept. So you go to the book of Sirach, Ecclesiastes, cuss. Matter of fact, we didn't have to go there. First, actually, we can go to the book of Psalms, chapter 18. 18 um, because it's going to really give you the full understanding. Who really gave David the power to do what he does? Okay. So we go to the book of, we go to um, Psalms chapter 18. I will actually go to, I go to verse 24. Well, I don't even have to go that far. I probably should go down. You want one? Which one? Which one you want? I actually go to verse. Um, let me go to verse I twenty. Mean, I mean, I could probably go up though. Yeah, I mean, I, I like Psalms eighteen in general. Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, let me see. Start at verse. I just sit there thinking. I said I just want to keep it in context. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You start there. Matter of fact, um, we really want one, one verse twenty. Yeah. Okay, verse twenty. Okay. The book of Psalms, chapter 18, verse 20. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, mm. according to the cleanness of my hands, hath he recompensed me. Oh. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also upright before him, and I kept myself from mine iniquity. Therefore, have the Lord recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his eyesight. With the merciful, with the merciful thou wilt show thyself merciful. With an upright man, thou wilt show thyself upright. With the pure, thou wilt show thyself pure. Mm. And with thy froward, Thou wouldst show thyself froward, for thou wast saved the afflicted people, but wilt bring down high looks, for thou wilt light my candle. Mm. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. That's what happens <laughs> when you come into the truth, mm -hmm. all right? The Lord puts that spirit on you because the spirit of, of man is like the candle of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So he puts, you, puts that light in you, and then that clears out the darkness. The darkness was when you was in Christianity, when you was in the world, mm -hmm. when you was, you know, you believe it, in your mind, you thought you believed in God, and mm. you just operating in madness. We was operating in a childlike mentality, okay? Come on. Verse 29. For by thee, I have run through a troop. For by thee, I have <laughs> run through a troop. So, he's, David's telling you this. He ran through a troop of men. Come on. And by my God... Have I leaped over a wall? He was, by the power of the Most High, he was able to leap over a wall. If you know about ancient walls and garrisons, that's not a, that's, that's a, that's a task. That's a superhero uh, move. And they tell you that uh, in uh, Superman. He leaped over tall, been a single, single bound. bound. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Verse 30. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. Uh. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. For who is God, save the Lord. Or who is a rock, save our God. Save, or who is a rock, save our God. But it says, as for God, his ways is perfect. So what? which part about the law don't you understand is perfect? Because you folks that always say you can't keep commandments, then you're saying that the what God instituted for us is not perfect. You have a problem, and basically you're an enemy of God, which he's going to make all his enemies underneath his footstool, become, you know, underneath his foot, feet. So you have to think about what you're doing. Come on. Verse 32. It is God that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. Come on. He maketh my feet like hind's feet. He say make his feet like hind's feet. There you go. Uh, that's your superhero flash. Yep. All right, they put that, make him run fast. He say he making his feet like Heinz feet. This is giving us a glimpse too. David is fast. He was able, he was, uh, able to uh, fight, so his stamina is off the chain. Superhuman <laughs> strength. All right, able to run through a troop. Come on. And setteth me up 
upon my high places. Come on. He teacheth my hands to war, so that a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. So he can literally <laughs> bend steel. Hmm. Come on. Verse 35. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, mm. and thy right hand have holden me up, and thy gentleness have made me great. So the mercy, the meekness, but it also show you who was his right hand. It also show you that. So if David takes a rock out of his bag and a stone and slings it, let's find out. I mean, who you think was his right hand? Do you think he just pitched that little <laughs> a stone, little pebble or something lightly? <laughs> Come on. We Let's go, go back. You want the first Samuel? Mm -hmm. First set or oh, second uh, second Samuel. I seen somebody pull a Zachariah. Oh, I know. You, you oh. go there. We we'll go to where? So we we'll go to second uh Samuel. I seen somebody pull um Zachariah. Zachariah twelve. Mm -hmm. Well we can, we, well, we can go there. Yeah, we was gonna go there anyway. I mean kinda got a little bit ahead of us, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Zachariah. Chapter twelve. And we start at verse eight. In that day shall the Lord defend, excuse me, defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David. And the house of David shall be as God. Can you um can Google uh feeble? Google feeble. Who going to say it, a lady or a man? <laughs> Feeble. I can't see it. Feeble. Feeble. Mm. <sighs> Lacking physical strength. I can't see it, especially as there you go, especially as a result of age or illness, weak, weakly, weakened. <laughs> I, I, it's blocked on me. Sickly, ailing, unwell, poor. Yeah. <laughs> My legs is very feeble after, yeah, the virus. Yeah, I know. Shaky. Debilitated. Incapacitated. Puny. Puny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So Trembly. So what does it say to feeble? It says here. David was none of those attributes. Right. We just read that. So it says the feeble. It says, in that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Uh -huh. And he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David. And the house of David shall be as God, as the angel of the Lord before them. As the angel, Christ, as Christ before them. Okay, so. You got to realize the weakest brother in the whole entire, you know, nation is going to be mighty like David. Verse 9. Come on. And it shall come to pass in that day mm. that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. We, we, we read that. <laughs> we read that. All the nations that come against Israel to be destroyed. Come on. <laughs> Verse 10. And I will pour upon the house of David. And upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, mm. the spirit of grace and of supplications, and they shall look upon me, whom they have pierced, mm. and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. So we know David, let's go there, let's go to the Apocrypha. Go to the Sirach, or Ecclesiasticus, chapter 47 and verse 1. B. 
because it shows you the true understanding of David. <laughs> I mean, even David himself said he would like to be he would he would be a a doorkeeper in the kingdom. But you ask yourself a question. Wouldn't you want to be like this? <laughs> I got it. Okay. Ecclesiastes chapter 47 and verse 1. All right. It says, and after him rose up Nathan to to prophes to prophesy in the time of David. Mm. As uh, as is the fat taken away from the peace offering, mm. so was David chosen out of the children of Israel. This was something that was already preordained. He was already chosen. Mm -hmm. Verse 3, mm. he played with lions <laughs> as with kids mm. and with bears as with lambs. That's how, that's how the weakest brother is going to be. Playing with, you know, lions and bears ain't nothing to play with. Okay, they're ruthless. Go ahead. Slew he not a giant <laughs> when he was yet but young? And did he not take away reproach from the people mm. when he lifted up his hands with the stone mm. in the sling and beat down the boasting of Goliath? You know that had to you know that had to been that had to been a Jake to say something. You know how we say he had a, he got a beat down? Mm. He got a, a serious beat down. Go ahead. For he called upon the most high Lord mm. and he gave him strength. In his right hand. Who sits at the right hand of the most high? So the primary weapon, he said on his what? On his right hand to slay that mighty warrior mm. and set up the horn of his people. Mm. Set up the horn, the king of his people. Christ comes out of that lineage. Go ahead. So the people honored him with 10,000. And praised him in the blessing of the Lord, in that he gave him a crown of glory. Mm. That goes to show you the the rest of the Israelites who are, especially the hundred and forty four thousand. That's why we keep saying you. That's chosen out for glory. You're chosen for glory. People don't realize that. Okay, mm. the Lord cho choosing uh twelve thousand out of each tribe. Mm. Okay, now. Second Corinthians chapter five, start at verse 17. Second Corinthians chapter five and verse 17. Uh -huh. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, if any man considers himself to really fully be repenting in Christ, come on. He is a new creature. So you're supposed to be a new creature, something different, something different coming to the earth. Come on. All things are passed away. So the old man, the old mentality, we are just trying to do the old man. Mm -hmm. uh, that mentality has to go bye-bye because -bye. Yep. the old man, he's a whoremonger. He's a uh, person who used drugs, mm -hmm. uh, conniving, hate his nation, same same thing, old woman, all right? Might have been a prostitute mm -hmm. or, um, or a model, you yeah. know, whatever. <laughs> That's, I, I shouldn't have said that. Oh, they're going to get you. <laughs> you said, <laughs> I mean, Google says it. <laughs> Google, Google used it. <laughs> hey, look, the truth is the truth. <laughs> but uh, Y'all write Google. They the one who, who use it, too. Right. The point is you not in the spirit. You were old, but you come into the truth. Mm -hmm. You see the beautiful pictures where uh, you saw you see sisters that was in the world. Mm -hmm. They might have had on pants. They have on high heels, red bottoms, hair done, all kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And people look at that and go, this is who I used to be. And then the transformation is just night and day. You see them then on a modest level and you go, wow, not, not respected, well respected, mm -hmm. all right? Same thing with bras. You see, some bras they when they was uh in uh Christianity mode, they wear bow ties or even uh Islam. <laughs> They're freshly shaven, no uh no beard, no nothing. You know, face looking like a, a female. Mm -hmm. Coming to the truth, start growing things, start growing things out. Right. If you are a brother that's in the truth and you struggling growing your beard, you might want to try some hair tonic. I don't know. <laughs> you know, pray to the Lord to try. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, 
I was, yeah, I know, but the thing uh, is, <laughs> is it lawful for a sister to shave her beard? Yo, man, yo, man. that lawful? Is that lawful? You just get some of that nair stuff. You don't have to shave. You get some of that nair stuff, man. Wipe it off. Somebody, if somebody might want to ask the question, if you do, please do not do do not comment on that. I'm not answering it. And no matter how much you want to put it in there, whatever your mind in, in your mind you saying. Leave it alone, all right? <laughs> the point is, go get one of them lace front beards or whatever the case may be if you're a brother and um, do something magical, okay? <laughs> no, I'm not saying use magic either. You got to say so many different things to Israel because we the, we're the... Uh, They'll try it. We have uh, brain problems or something, <laughs> all right? Anyway, uh, back to seriousness, but you got to realize something, all right? There's a way that we supposed to be transforming ourselves mm -hmm. into the pattern of Christ. All right. Let's read on. The second Corinthians chapter five, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Uh -huh. All things are passed away. Uh -huh. Behold, all things are become new. So obviously when we look at David, the, his, his attributes of how he trusted and everything else uphold them. It was, it was uphold them to a certain standard, but even, David fell. Even David fell. All that mightiness. So for us, that's an example for us. You can try to be mighty all you want, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, you have to uphold yourself to righteous mm -hmm. practices, righteous standards, mm -hmm. okay? Or you will fall, or you can fall, all right? Any, anybody can fall. Let me say that. Anyone can fall. The hope is if somebody falls that you have people around you that can pick you, pick you back up. All right. But anyone can fall. If you, if you get pride on you, the most high can cause you to be in some other level and you can fall. OK, so um, when you read in like Galatians six and one, we supposed to restore a person. You know, when we see the godly sorrow, we restore you considering ourselves that, you know, we we could fall. And then we want somebody. To stand. But then on this level right here, if you're sitting at this table, if you fall, it's a great fall. Because then everybody starts, you know, it's it's a it's a downward spiral. Because who's gonna be up here, you know? Yeah, man, I saw O at the strip club. Then I'm over here talking about don't be a whoremonger. Then you say, then I saw him with like, you know, robbing and stealing. And I'm telling him, up sitting up here, no, don't rob and steal. Come on now, who gonna want to follow that? So we hold ourselves to the highest level of standard and walk circumspect. Therefore, everybody, every one of you have to hold yourselves to that type of standard as well because we're measuring up to the fullness of Christ. We're trying to get to that level with the best of our ability. All right? Read on. Verse 18. And all things are of God. All things is of the Most High. Come on. Who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. Reconciled us to himself. That's why we're saying we're making peace mm -hmm. with the Most High. What does the Most High love about Israel? You see him, the Dave, David was a man after his own heart. So David's showing himself a man, mm -hmm. showing himself to believe, showing himself that he's about his nation. That's why David, the, a lot of mercy David got, because David loved his nation above all things. Come on. And have given to us the ministry of reconciliation. That's what the ministry is about. The, the ministry is for us to make reconciliation and to, through Christ to the Most High. Come on. Verse 19. To wit that God was in Christ. Now write this down or highlight this script because that's why we say when we greet everyone, Most High in Christ bless. Mm -hmm. All right. To wit God was in Christ. That's why we say Shalom, Most High in Christ bless you. Because we understand mm -hmm. the most I was in Christ. That's the only the only way that we could ever make it. Come on. Reconciling the world uh -huh. and to himself. Reconciling the world and to himself. The world, Israel. Come on. Not imputing their trespasses into them. So if you first watch and you go, well, dang, he said the world. Because, yeah, Isaiah 45, 17, mm -hmm. you have an understanding that Israel is the world. Okay. So you write those little nuances down, just like you understand in Hebrews 1 that, guess what? There's many worlds. Mm -hmm. So you write that stuff down so you don't get trapped by it. Oh, the world, the world. That's a childlike mind. Here we go to childlike mind again. The whole book is an Israelite book 
But then some people get into a childlike mentality and think this book is written for everybody. That's right. It's come out of the madness. This book is written to a people, a nation of people called the Israelites. Okay. And it's all about them returning back, making peace with the Most High through Christ. All right. Going through their ups and downs. Read on. And have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Uh huh. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. Now that we are ambassadors for Christ, you have a you have a way that you have to conduct yourself. You brothers supposed to be getting mighty, getting ready to do the Lord's work, hastening the day of the Lord, making sure that you show you thyself a man. All right, and you women supposed to be getting in righteous order, understanding how you're supposed to live, understanding how you're supposed to conduct yourself, how you're supposed to speak. All right, that's the biggest problem with the ladies right now. Speech. All right, you fix that. That's like 90% of your problem. Mm -hmm. Come on. As though God did beseech you by us. As though God did beseech you by us. Beg of you by us, Reed. We pray. We do what? We pray. Come on. You in Christ stead, be ye reconciled to God. We pray that you in in this in that same steed be reconciled unto the most high. Because when you do, that's a great thing. Like a lot of y'all are just looking around and you fed up and you're seeing how the world is operating and everything. Just oh, this is a great time. Understand, these are the greatest times right now. The Most High is showing up and showing out for us. Come on. Verse 21. For he had made him to be sin for us. He, the, cause so the Most High did something so miraculous. He made Christ be sin for us. How is that possible? He said, okay, I'm going to see somebody walking perfect. I'm going to shine the light on them for the show the way and let them understand. And, 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 and let him lay down his life. We did a topic a couple weeks back uh, in closed circuit uh, showing Mel, Mel Kezer that. Mm -hmm. But uh, a lot of times, you know, when you start going up, people just, it kind of eludes you. But you have to understand something. If he's not having sin, the curse is not upon him. Christ didn't sin. So how curse is upon him? How, how come he can die, lay down his own life, all right? Not to mention... When did you see Melchizedek ever uh, die? Mm -hmm. It's appointed to man to die once in the judgment. Understand that. But if you was, you won't probably understand a lot of this because those classes are closed session. <laughs> a lot of our classes are closed session. Uh, when we start talking about and discussing, it's actually really discussions, <laughs> uh, biblical discussions. You miss out on that because you see the Sabbath classes is broad sh strokes, folks. I mean, we're talking to the masses with this. But when we close down to the family, we communicate. All right. Just like y'all, you know, we, we send up prayers before the classes. Mm -hmm. Used to be on the Uber line, sending up prayers. All right. Understand that we're spiritual people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Read it from the top. Uh, second, second Corinthians chapter five, verse 21. Uh -huh. For he had made him to be sin for us. Who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Mm. Mm. How, I mean, just to think of that, if you dial back, if you look at, so you might not have read the Bible, the whole Bible before. Or you might not really have went through the timeline on the Bible. But just that statement right there is amazing because. Think about think about what the Most High has, has given us. The ability to reconcile and fix the nation spiritually first, fix ourselves spiritually first, and that's a, that's the hardest level uh, and the hardest battle, okay? Because it's a spiritual warfare first. All right, we know the the Most High is going to turn Israel into the battle axis. We know he's going to use Israel as the weapons of war. We know all that. But how could we have a retarded soldier? <laughs> to understand what I'm saying, right. how could we have somebody that's dysfunctional and he's supposed to be a, the top-level soldier on the earth that can run on water, that can uh, teleport, that can you know operate all type of uh, systems and be able to be in another place? How could you ever get to that level if you don't understand righteousness 
and how to conduct yourself because guess what? Newsflash, folks. It says that we're not going to break rank. We're not going to break rank. That means we have a high level of respect for the organization and for the uh, nation, all right? No embarrassing the nation. No embarrassing it. That 144,000 show up, it says... Uh, it's the it's the Garden of Eden before them and, and that destruction behind them, all right. And they and they show you on um you know another movie they show that on uh, Riddick. Remember how the people come in, and uh what is that what was it uh Chronicles of Riddick? They come in with the faces they drop down and wherever they drop down they destroy in front of them. It's like open season and a man will pull what it was showing is. He was able to uh, pull spirits out of people's bodies, but he couldn't pull Riddick's spirit because they said he was a different type. They used, they called him a Furion, but really, you know, they was mocking him. He was really an Israelite. They mocked it also on um, on the mummy with that when that then that army with with the um, that ghost army they had. Yeah, they mocked that too on that too. <laughs> yeah, they, I tell you, they, they they mocked the movie. Mm. But read that last scripture again, okay? Second Corinthians chapter five verse twenty one, for he had made him to be sin for us, mm. who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Mm. The righteousness of God in him. So when Most High see you, he just see Christ. If you don't have that, you're finished. So that's why it has to be the hidden man of the heart first. All right. Then here comes the army. So let's go to Isaiah. Now, we could take you into uh second Ezra and everything else to show you how what was what what um how this army is gonna be gathering the world army, the nation's armies, and then they're gonna try to turn and fight Christ. But you already understand if if you are starting to read this book, you already understand the world hates you because you follow Christ. So obviously they hate Christ. All right. So understand that portion of it. Well, I'm at um, Isaiah. Battle Axe. Oh, this is. Start at. Yeah, go. Yeah, give me that. Yeah, go there. Yeah. Jeremiah, chapter fifty-one and verse twenty. Mm -hmm. Thou art my battle axe. Oh, start at verse nineteen. Verse nineteen. Okay. Uh, Jeremiah, I mean, Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 19. Mm -hmm. The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the former of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. Mm. The Lord of hosts is his name. So remember when we was reading about David, he mentioned the Lord of hosts, all right? We're talking about Christ. The host is the Israelites, all right? Come on. Verse 20, thou art my battle axe and weapons of war, for with thee will I break in pieces the nation. So he going to use the Israelite army, the 144,000, to break in pieces the nation. All right, come on. And with thee will I destroy kingdoms, mm. and with thee will I break in pieces the horse and his rider. And with thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider. With thee also will I break in pieces man and woman. And with thee will I break in pieces old and young. You know when it says a horse and his rider, um, this man's military equipment, his, his fighter jets, all his tanks, all this other stuff. When It's nothing more disheartening when you hit, you know, the, the biggest guy punched you in the head and he realized you didn't fall, now you're finished. So you got to think about you You use your primary weapon and it doesn't work. 
to 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 bring it up to today, that's like this man dropping a nuke, and that hundred and forty four thousand just walk right through it. Mm. His it's worst a, weapon. It was a movie. Uh, I think it was Independence Day. They used the nuke. Boom. And but the uh, but the uh, the the, the uh, chariot that came in, it didn't even phase him. It was still there. <laughs> that was disheartening, right there. You done? You fired primary your primary weapon, and it didn't work. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine now they're going into hiding and everything else? But of course, we know the scripture says it ain't going to be nowhere to hide. He's gonna uh, have us to go and fish him out, hunt him out. All right, come on. With thee also will I break in pieces man and woman, and with thee will I break in pieces old and young, mm. and with thee will I break in pieces the young man and the maid. <sighs> I will also break in pieces with thee the shepherd and his flock, and with thee will I break in pieces the husbandman and his yoke of oxen, and with thee will I break in pieces captains and rulers. Mm. Captains and rulers. Mm. Think about that. Read the next verse. Verse 24. And I will render unto Babylon and to all the inhabitants of the Chaldees all their evil that they have done in Zion in your sight, saith the Lord. So this, but, but we know he hasn't used this as a battle axe no more. So obviously this is Babylon and the Chaldeans is being used as a similitude. All right, come on. Verse 25, Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, saith the Lord. There it is, O destroying mountain. So this is the top government on the face of the earth. No time the Lord returns, He's the Lord says he's against it. Mm. Obviously, so that show you shouldn't be following anything they're putting, putting out there. Come on. Which destroyeth all the earth. Uh-huh. And I will stretch out mine hand upon thee and will roll thee down from the rocks. Uh huh. And will make thee a burnt mountain. And will make thee a burnt mountain. So obviously, Babylon the Great is going to be destroyed by fire, of course. The Lord's coming with fire. But let's go to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verse 1. So obviously the mountain is going to burn, the government, the factions of how this system is set up is going down. And obviously the Lord is going to use the Israelites, even in that day, to execute judgment. So you got to ask yourself a question. Why are they so scared of the Israelite men rising up and coming together? Uh, for, because they understand certain principles of this Bible. Okay. Come on. Second Timothy chapter two and verse one. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. So you got to be strong in the grace. You have to understand it's a time and a place. We're building our spirits up first. Get our minds together. All right. The nation is growing. Everyone's waking back up. Um, you have to understand this, okay? You folks that are uh, in your in your areas, you're supposed to be hunkering down, getting into these scripts, starting to get your ministry, building it up, building things up mm-hmm. for the right mind state. The right mind state is, hey, y'all, let's keep these commandments in Christ. Mm-hmm. Let's show the uh, highest level of love and respect for each other. Let's follow our heritage, all right, other than the world's heritage, mm-hmm. and get ourselves together because we know something is coming. All right, we need to be in righteous order. Come on. Verse 2. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men. So that's show you something. Even when you're doing the works, you're supposed to do it with great seriousness and, and commit that effort to faithful men. So you're building. Come on. Who shall be able to? To teach others also. Be able to teach others also. All right. That's why we say everybody's working on their ministry and to build this nation together. Come on. Verse 3. Thou therefore endure hardness. Thou therefore endure hardness. You know, it's, it, these times get going to get way more harder. All right. Come on. As a good soldier. As a what? As a good soldier. As a good soldier. 
All right? It uses similitude of that as a good soldier. Come on. Of Jesus Christ. Of Jesus Christ. Come on. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. What does that mean? That means that, yes, you have to live. Yes, you have to do things. But you understand that it's a war and it's a spiritual battle. I'm not going to get entangled up in this. We're going to keep pressing forward. Come on. That he may please him. That he may do what? That he may please him. Come on. Who have chosen him to be a soldier. It's please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. So the question would be, did the Lord choose you to be a soldier? Well, of course he did. So back to the same question is, if David called him Lord, then how is he then his son? Because when the Lord returns, he's going to set the uh, uh, armies of Israel up again. All right. And he's going to lead it. He's going to lead it. That's why he's known as the king of Israel. He's going to lead it just as David led the armies of Israel. All right. By the power of the most high. That's they didn't understand that. They thought Christ was coming for everybody and all kind of other things. You know, he, the nation's going to be taken away. They're going to they take away our nation because he's trying to. No, he was coming to set Israel, reconcile Israel back to the most high to set that army again to rule the kingdom on the face of the earth and throughout entire the entire existence of creation. All right. That's what the Lord's coming to do. He's going to rule with a rod of iron and break in pieces anybody and anything that does not accept the rulership of the Israelites underneath Christ. The book of Acts, chapter 5 and verse 29. <laughs> the book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Um, You better believe it. I mean, all of the... Holy people understand that, all right? We're not going to follow the world. We're not going to get entangled up in all the madness and whatever the case may be. We're going to follow Christ in the keeping of the commandments to the best of our ability because one day when the Lord set forth righteous judgment, we want to be on the right side of that, okay? We don't want to be on the bad side. We give all praises to the Most High in Christ, all right, for allowing us to go over the scriptures a little bit. Y'all folks, continue to tune in. Continue to reach out. Continue to go to the website. All right, sign in, sign up, IsraeliteSaintsOfChrist.org. All right, live and interactive. New member, yeah, it's, it's right there. Become a saint. All right, get into the fight. Get into the get into the fight. All right, stop uh, being weak, man. All you brothers out there who are not in this fight and at a high level in this battle, man, come out of the madness. Stop being weak. Don't let your hands be uh, feeble. All right, put the knees back together, whatever. You understand? We in this, we in this to the death, man. All right, all praises to the Most High in Christ. With that, we say shalom, y'all.